Continuing my tip series, here's 10 more tips for working on an iPad. First up, you can add apps to multitasking via notification. When a notification appears, just grab it and start a drag, then drop it to whatever side you want to add it to. This also works for slide over as well. A quick way of starting a new note is to take the Apple Pencil and touch the lock screen with it. This will open a new note in the Notes app. You can change how this works in settings. Just like on the iPhones without home buttons, you can swipe along the bottom to jump between previously used apps. This also works in slide over. This is a new one I just found out about thanks to the Apple support Twitter account. You can two finger swipe down on emails in the mail app to select more than one. You can add the Apple TV remote to control center via settings. This is a great way of managing your Apple TV if the remote is not nearby. You can even use Siri on your Apple TV from this. If you have the Apple TV remote app installed, there are new shortcut actions you can use. This includes waking the TV up and opening a specific app. This is great for automating movie night. In the iPad OS 13, apps now gain the ability to install fonts. The first is Adobe CC. Even if you don't pay for an Adobe CC subscription, there are a handful of free fonts you can use. If you do pay for a CC subscription, there are over 1700 fonts available to you. To install the font you want, just tap on it. The next app is Font Diner. This app only costs $5 a year, but it doesn't even support landscape view on the iPad. Either way, you have options. Hopefully we'll see more of these apps in the future. YouTube would be the perfect app to support picture in picture, but they don't. I use an app called CornerTube to get around this. From the video, hit the share button and pick CornerTube. The video will load in a new window and you can hit the picture in picture view button now. Regex is something I've been using more and more lately. This is a way for you to search for a specific string of text to match. You can then copy or do whatever with it. You can use regex by using the match text action in shortcuts. Speaking of shortcuts, I have a handy trick for renaming a file. I use the rename file action, but I default this to ask for input. So if I have a shortcut that saves a file and the file name doesn't follow a pattern, I can do this to get a more Mac-like save dialog box. That's it for this set of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a great day.